जय राधो माधव कुंज बिहारे जय राधो माधव कुंज बिहारे जय गोपी चन्ना बाला बागिरी बारे रे जय गोपी जन बाला गिरी बार रे जाशोर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन जाशोर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन जमुना तेरा बना चारे जमुना तेरा बना चारे जायो राधो माधव कुंजारी हारे जायो गोपी जन बाल बिरी बर जाइयो गोपी जन बाल बिरी बर जाशोर नंदन नज जन रंजन शोर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन जाशोर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन जाशोर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन जमुना तेरा जमुना तेरा बनाचारे जायो राधो माधव कुंज बिहारे जायो राधो माधव कुंज बिहारे राधो माधव कुंज बिहारे जय ओम विष्णु पार अपम सुब्रभाविकीमा गोस्वामी सुवाइन गे से वाक्य वनंत स्वयं महाराज शिल प्रभु पार की जय अनंत कोति वैष्णव की जय नाम चार्य शिल हरिदास ठाकुर की जय इसकान चांद्र चार्य सुवाइन गे शिल प्रभु पार की जय प्रेम से गौर श्री कृष्ण से सन्य प्रभु निचानंद राधा शिवासुदी गौ वाक्य वन की जय किसी राधा कृष्ण गौ गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंद राधा कुंद की वनानी की जय मथुर धाम की जय नवदीप धाम की जय दिनपुरी धाम की जय दिग्नत प्राण की जय वृंदावन दाम की जय बाकी देवी की जय तुलसी महारानी की जय गौ प्रेम नंदी हरे दिवो साम वेर बाकी वृंद की जय ऑल ग्लोरी समल वोटी ऑल ग्लोरी समल वोटी ऑल ग्लोरी समल वोटी ऑल ग्लोरी ऑल ग्लोरी सी जी गुरु गुरंग हो जय सो ग्लोरी सो पावन हरि कृष्ण ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्रीमद भागवत कैंसो सेवन चैप्टर सेवन टेक्स नंबर वन सुथाई पृष्ठ महाभागवत सुरा 
Uvacha sons, my amana. Smaran Madan Ubashitan. Translation. Narada Muni said, Oh, what is this? Since when do we need translation? Narada Muni said, Although Prahlad Maharaj was born in a family of Asuras, he was the greatest of all devotees. Having thus been questioned by his class friends, the sons of the Asuras, he remembered the words spoken to him by me and replied to his friends as follows. Purport. When he was in the womb of his mother, Prahlad Maharaj listened to the words of Narada Muni. One cannot imagine how the baby in embryo could hear Narada, but this is spiritual life. Progress in spiritual life cannot be obstructed by any material condition. This is called the Haitya Pratyata. Reception of spiritual knowledge is never checked by any material condition. Thus, Prahlad Maharaj, from his very childhood, spoke spiritual knowledge to his class friends, and certainly it was effective, although all of them were children. Srinada Uvacha, Evam Daicha Sutai Prishto, Maha Bhagavato Asura, Uvacha Tans Mayamana, Smaran Mad Anubashitam. Srinada Muni said, Although Prahlad Maharaj was born in a family of Asuras, he was the greatest of all devotees. Having thus been questioned by his class friends, the sons of the Asuras, he remembered the words spoken to him by me and replied to his friends as follows. <clears throat> so Narada Muni, the great saint Narada Muni, is explaining uh, this dialogue, how Prahlad Maharaj was such a great devotee. If you remember, he's explaining it to Maharaj Judas here, so this is part of his dialogue. And... Uh, he's explaining how he spoke this knowledge to Prahlad Maharaj when he was in the womb of his mother. His mother was the wife of Hiranyakashipu. And we will read the story as it goes on further. But the story is that his mother, I think her name was Kayadu, she was uh, in the palace of Hiranyakashipu when Hiranyakashipu went off to the Mandara mountain to perform great austerities in order to be able to take over the whole universe. So, at that time, the demigods, knowing that Hiranyakashipu was absent, they became very powerful and they attacked and were wiping out the demons left and right. They ransacked Hiranyakashipu's palace and they kidnapped his wife because they knew that this boy, inside the womb, the son of Hiranyakashipu, that he must have been a great demon. Now, you can't kill a woman, especially a pregnant woman. Nobody can do this. Therefore, they just kidnapped her and waited for the boy to be born. They were going to kill him. Somehow, it's all right to kill babies, in the, <laughs> but not uh, pregnant women. So, they were waiting for him to be born so they could kill him because he was, a ra he was going to be, they thought, the greatest rascal because uh, he was the son of Hiranyakashipu. So, uh, at that time, when they were taking her away in space, they were taking her away through space, uh, Narada Muni immediately came, having no particular engagement at that moment. He saw there was something wrong going on here. So he said to them, Stop, halt! Don't take this woman. You don't know, but although she's the wife of Aranyakashipu, the boy inside this womb is the greatest devotee of the Lord. Now, the demigods, they couldn't understand how this could be possible. But they didn't question Narada Muni because they know whatever Narada Muni says is absolute truth. They have this much respect for Narada. He's the sage amongst the demigods. So amongst the demigods, when Narada Muni says something, immediately they accept it. They don't argue with Narada Muni. Demigods, they are suras. That means they are of the quality of the goodness. They have a higher quality than we human beings, generally. So therefore, when they, have, they understand the qualities of a great saintly personality, they accept him in that way. And they just do whatever he says. So Narada Muni said, you just give her to me, I will take her to my ashram. They immediately gave it and circumambulated the, the child to counteract their offenses. They circumambulated, traditional, to circumambulate a great personality. So then they left back to their abode and Narada Muni took the uh, mother and child to his ashram and she offered various kinds of services and and in turn, Narada Muni instructed in spiritual life. Now, the mother, because she was a woman, she forgot everything. But 
Uh, it's a quote from Shilpa. But uh, the child in the womb, he somehow remembered everything. Now one may think this is very astonishing, how a child in the womb can remember everything he hears while he's in the womb. Well, that is not so astonishing. Because we see from the Srimad Bhagavatam in the third canto, that for a child who is pious, while he is in the womb after receiving his consciousness back at seven months, at the time of seven months, he gets his consciousness back. At the time of death, he is put into the uh, semen of a father that is about to impregnate a mother That at that time of impregnation. That means the time when the sperm and the egg unite. At that time, he is placed in that position. And that living entity is unconscious from that point until the point of seven months of development. At the point of seven months of a development, he awakens within the womb. And that's when the mothers, I suppose, feel baby moving around in the womb at seven months. When the consciousness is there and the baby starts deciding that it doesn't like the position it's in, it's going to try and find another one that's more comfortable. Because he's very uncomfortable. Extremely uncomfortable position. <laughs> the mothers, they think, oh, it's something wonderful. The baby is moving. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Little do they know that the child is in complete agony. He's trying to find some decent position to sit in for a while. It's a very terrible condition for the child at that time. So the consciousness is there, developed at seven months. So at that point, the child can actually hear. His organ of hearing, his uh, organs of the body are sufficiently developed whereby they may, may get sensory perception. And he perceives hot, cold. He perceives when the mother eats too many chilies. He's burnt by that. His internal organ is burnt by that. In this way, he's got consciousness. So, at that time, if one is a pious living entity, he begins to pray to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, My dear Lord, if you just get me out of this womb, I will worship you, I will serve you, I will surrender to you. Just get me out of this womb. He prays like that. Of course, when he takes his birth, the shock of birth is so great, he also forgets about his vow. And since he's no longer packed up in a womb, he's freed, then he forgets about surrendering to Krishna. This is also an inclination of the human being. That when the human being is suffering, he surrenders very much. Oh God, help me. Oh God, save me. And as soon as God saves him, he says, there's no God. Or he forgets about God. This is the human being mentality. When he's suffering, all of a sudden, God is very important. And when he's enjoying, he forgets about God. This is the problem. So, when he's in that womb, he can pray. And if he can pray, he can hear. He, he, he can hear the outside things going on. His consciousness is there. The soul naturally is full of knowledge. And from previous lifetimes, he has remembrances. That's why he knows when he gets out, there'll be a better situation. He also knows there's a God and he could surrender to him. He should have surrendered to him before, but he made some mistake. So therefore, he's in this womb again. So, at that time, this was the time when Narada Muni spoke to Mother Kayadu and Prahlad Maharaj he heard, so he remembered all these instructions. Self-realized souls do not become bewildered, either by birth or by death. Beers touch in the muyanti. The Those who are self-realized, they don't become disturbed. They don't become bewildered and they don't become forgetful at the time of death. Neither do they become forgetful at the time of birth. So Prahlad Maharaj uh, actually was a great, great, great devotee. This was because of the Simultaneous curse and benediction of Mother Diti from her husband, Kashapa Muni, because she committed an offense of inducing sex life at a time when it was forbidden, thus causing Lord Shiva's ire or anger upon her. But by offering nice prayers, Lord Shiva's asitos, which means he's very easy to anger and very easy to please as well, she angered him, therefore she received the curse that her, the womb, the ch children in the womb, they were Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha, would cause trouble to the whole universe. But the grandchild would become the greatest devotee of the Lord. That was the benediction. So that grandchild is Prahlad Maharaj. And now he is taking his birth. But before, he received this knowledge from Narada Muni, who knew about these benedictions. Narada Muni knows everything. He knows about the different curses. He knows about the different benedictions. And he acts in such a way as to cause them to come true. 
and to cause them to come true quicker sometimes. Like in the occasion of Krishna defeating and killing Kamsa, Narada Muni's business was to speed it up by telling Kamsa where Krishna was and what he wanted to do. In this way, Kamsa got very upset and immediately speeded the whole process up so Krishna could kill him quicker. This is Narada Muni's business. He just goes around making transcendental trouble for all of the demons. So, at this time, he instructed Prahlad Maharaj. And Prahlad Maharaj remembered all of this instruction. Otherwise, how a five-year-old boy could speak philosophy like this. Nowadays, five-year-old boy has a hard time speaking properly. But Prahlad Maharaj not only spoke properly, but he spoke Mahabhagavata philosophy, Bhagavad Dharma, because he was no ordinary five-year-old boy. Just like Dhruva Maharaj is also no ordinary five-year-old boy. Otherwise, how a five-year-old boy with standing on one leg can push the earth out of its orbit by his weight <laughs> can cause the universal air to be choked up. Not ordinary five-year-old boy. Similarly, Prahlad Maharaj was not an ordinary five-year-old boy. Otherwise, how the greatest demon that ever existed couldn't kill him. <coughs> couldn't kill him no matter what he tried to do. So this five-year-old boy was a Mahajan, one of the twelve great authorities in devotional service, Mahabhagavata of the highest order. And he remembered everything that the great saint Narada Muni told him. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj was speaking this knowledge to the sons of demons. This is the way he began his instructions to his classmates in the previous chapter. Now we are children. Although it seems we are children, my dear friends. Actually, we are neither children, neither we old men. We are spirit soul. We are part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. We have just somehow or another taken birth in this body due to our past previous activities. But don't be fooled and don't make the excuse, oh, now we're children, we can play and waste our time. No, no. Komacharat pragya dharman bhagavatani ha. Pragya, if you're actually intelligent children, and you're supposed to be, after all, they were the highly elevated sons of various demons, elevated in demoniac life. Komacharat pragya dharman bhagavatani ha. If you actually got some intelligence, then take to this bhagavat dharma. Iha means in this world, the best thing you can do is to take to bhagavat dharma or devotional service of the Supreme Lord. Dharman Bhagavatani. Prahlad Maharaj, five-year-old boy, telling his sons, his, his friends, sons of demons, don't waste your time jumping and playing like monkeys. Generally the materialists, they're jumping around like monkeys all the time. Especially the young children. Their whole business is to jump and shout and play all the time. Of course that's also healthy because we don't have any Prahlad Maharajas around here. But, uh, generally this is the business of children. But Prahlad Maharaj said, don't waste your time in this children's business. You can die at any moment. There are plenty of children who die. Why do you think you're going to live to be 80 years old and you can take up spiritual life when you're 75? It's a foolish conception. You can die at any moment. You may think you're a child of five years. Oh, you can't die. You're too young. No, there are plenty of children who die by falling off of a roof or getting run over by a car, or eating the wrong thing and being poisoned, or choking on a piece of coin. Many children die by drowning unexpectedly, or getting a disease. Now why do you think you're going to live forever? Why does anyone think he's going to live forever? Or he's going to make it to 80 years or whatever. He can die at any moment. And depending on how you die, you'll take your next body. Therefore, Manusha and Dula Bhajanma, this human form of life, is very, very rare. This birth is very rare and it's very valuable. Very rare and very valuable and very, very important. Very important. Very rare. Very valuable. You must take this human form of life very seriously. Even though you're small children, don't worry. You can take up Krishna consciousness. How? How, Prahlad? Come on, let's chant Hare Krishna name. And then he was dancing and chanting and they were dancing and chanting, having a nice kirtan. Children especially must be engaged in chanting. So Prabhupada said the young children from the time they wake up in the morning should be chanting, singing loudly, constantly. They are not expected to chant japa, the young children. They will not want to chant japa. When they are 
nine, ten years old, eight, nine, ten years old, they will be chanting more japa. I think they start around the age of seven or something. But in the beginning, they do not chant japa on the beat. They just simply sing Hare Krishna mantra and chant verses from early morning and through the whole morning program. They should never stop chanting. That's why whenever you see one of our children who doesn't chant during the kirtan and spaces out, you should immediately give him some encouragement. Come on, chant, chant. Scream your Hare Krishna mantra. Chant loud. Sing loudly. Sing out. That is what the children should do. They should not stop chanting because they think, oh, we're children, we shouldn't chant. We're children, we don't have to chant. We can space out. No, no, no. They should think, we are we are children, yes, so therefore we should sing louder than anyone else because we have the biggest mouths of all of them. <laughs> Outside, I hear them all day long screaming and yelling and jumping. Very big voices. So they should use this in the morning program. This way they can dovetail their propensity to sing and to chant all kinds of maya. They do it by chanting and singing Hare Krishna mantra. They must do. That is a very important program. That is actually the whole purpose of Gurukul for these children. It's to keep them four or five hours a day chanting. Our Gurukul teachers should learn this art of how to keep the children chanting the whole morning long. That's why they have this Gurukul mantra book. They just chant the whole book straight through. And this way they learn all the mantras. First the Gurukul teacher will say the mantra one line, then they will say it one line. They can go through the whole Bhagavad Gita this way. Chant one chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Chant uh, Brahma Samhita. Chant Mangala Charna. Chant. Just keep chanting. Chant, chant, chant. All morning long. That is actually the Gurukul program. It's very purifying for the teachers, very purifying for the students. All morning long. Just chant, chant, chant with the students. That's actually Gurukul. And then during the day you can learn some of these subjects. They're not very difficult. I have heard that it takes two months for our students to learn what it takes normal students one year to learn. So this is not the difficulty. But just keep chanting Hare Krishna Mantra. That was Prahlad Maharaj. Always chanting, chanting, chanting. Either chanting Hare Krishna Mantra or chanting this philosophy of Srimad Bhagavatam. Never stop chanting. Although five-year-old boy. Although you take any five-year-old boy and try to kill him. He will immediately scream and yell, Daddy, Daddy. But it was his daddy who was trying to kill him. And he was going, Krishna, Krishna, the real father. The real protector, the real friend, Krishna, only Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, under any and all circumstances. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj is the incarnation of Smarnam. Never forgot Krishna under any and all circumstances. And this is why at the very youngest age, Komar Charat Pragya, Komar means five years old. You don't have to wait till older. Five years old, Komar Charat Pragya. Start Bhagdharman Bhagavata. Start by chanting constantly. And this constant chanting at such early age gives one the strength to, at death, keep on chanting. Just like the Ajamil story. Ajamil was a good Gurukul man. He was a good Brahmin. But he fell down at an early age. But because of that training, he got the benediction to chant Narayan at the time of death. We have many examples, many members we also know in India, who, they were Gurukul students in their early life. And later on, when they get older, they realize they've wasted their whole lives. They say, just to go back to that Gurukul, that's all they think about. And then they start chanting Hare Krishna and performing service. We've seen it practically. We've seen many examples of men who took up Gurukul in their early life. Later on, they surrender to Krishna very nicely. But those who don't have Gurukul training in their early life, even if they go away, they'll stay away. Those who have training, even if they go away, they'll come back to Krishna someday. They must, because Krishna promises like that. So, therefore, this Gurukul training is extremely important. Just see, Prahlad Maharaj learned in the womb only. His training started so young. He started in the womb. And still, he remembered everything and became great devotee of the Lord. So, this must be told. Just like Prahlad Maharaj said, you are not little children. This is Maya. Our teachers must also tell the children, you are not little children. You are spirit soul who are now enwrapped in a small growing body. This is illusion if you think you are a child. You understand you are a spirit soul. And when you speak to them that way, they become immediately very mature. We've seen this practically in our Vindavan Guru Kul. Don't act like your age. Act like your spirit soul. A very important point. Oh, but they will act like their age. You cannot stop. Their natures are there. You cannot stop that. But they should always be hearing of the higher nature. 
then one can advance and develop. It's not that we artificially force them to start acting like they're 20 years old. And that would be a waste of time also, a waste of their childhood. 20 year old is immediately full of problems. But, uh, we want to show them the higher nature and give them the ability to come to that higher nature by hearing about what is to be done and what is not to be done. And to always be chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Not to be wasting one's life frivolously. Parama said, don't waste your life. My dear friends, although you're only five, six years old, don't think that you've got plenty of time to live. At any moment you can die. Don't forget that. Now, take up. Now. Doesn't matter what you did before. Now, at this point, take up devotional service of the Lord. At this point, presently, at the point you are presently existing, you take up devotional service of the Lord. Then, you'll be able to protect yourself from the onslaughts of Maya. Doesn't matter what you did before. Even Lord Caitanya, he saved Jaghai and Madhai. Who are the greatest devotees? The great, they were murderers even. Thieves, rascals, rogues of the highest order. Lord Nityananda saved them by his mercy. Lord Nityananda is so merciful. Therefore, what to speak of others who are not so bad? Even if they are so bad, Lord Nityananda's mercy is plenty to go around for all the fallen souls. Therefore, we should immediately, whatever position we hear, whatever position we're in, whether we be five years old, 50 years old, or 95 years old, at whatever age we hear that we should surrender to Krishna and become his servant, we should immediately take it up before it's too late. Because the older people, they, they have their ways set. They think, I am so old and so much learned. I have so much experience in this world. Actually, I don't have to do this. Or I don't have to accept this philosophy. I have my own philosophy, which is developed by much experience. Now, this is foolish, because there's no more experience than the Acharyas whose philosophy has been developed over the last millions of years. No one's philosophy is older. We may be very er old, learned scholar of 85 years old. That means we've been mentally concocting for the last 75 years. That doesn't mean anything in the face of millions of years of knowledge of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj said, whatever age you are, at whatever point you are, immediately accept Krishna's lotus feet. Surrender to them. That will be the success of life. That is the real success. If one actually understands what this human form of life is meant for. What this human form of life is meant for. <clears throat> so that is more or less. I always about